Hello everybody and welcome to Glazer's Geezer Garage. On this week's video, we're gonna continue work on the uh, windshield frame. I am very particular about getting things in correctly so I don't move fast. I've also learned a great appreciation for uh, Midyear Mitch's talent. Uh, as I'm going through this, doing the same thing, some of the things he does, uh, getting some coaching from him, I realize uh, he's younger than me, so he's got a little bit more energy. And uh, two is he's a very talented guy, so I appreciate him helping me. I'm learning a lot. Uh, I wish I was moving along faster with the videos. I know you guys want to see more progress, but some people like the detail, which I show a lot of details. Some people say they wish I'd accomplish more in the videos, but you know what? That's why we call it the geezer garage because we don't work as fast as the young guys like Mitch. So, but I appreciate you watching. So hope you enjoy it. Thanks. What I'm going to do today is I am going to, first of all, this new lower outer windshield piece. You see the, not exactly correct, but it's okay. We can trim that. It's, it's a little off, but we'll trim this excess off here. I'm going to take this stock windshield, which is right here, and I bought new rubber for it. I'm not going to put this in permanently, but what I'm going to do is stick the new windshield rubber in, stick the, the old windshield in, and just make sure everything lines up that a windshield fits in there correctly. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's get at it. A lot of people might be asking me, hey, why'd you grind that down? Do you have it installed right? I'll tell you why, because I put the stock piece in there. And if you'll see there, I trimmed that off very nicely with the, with the stock piece. So you may actually have to do a little bit more trimming out here, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the windshield in there. See if I have to do any more trimming, but I know this is in the right location. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and stick this new front windshield rubber on the glass and then do the old rope trick. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen that, how to get a windshield in. It's been a while since I've done it, so it could be a bit of struggle. This is an older windshield. It's already got a chip. I will replace this with a new one, but I'm just doing this to mock things up to make sure I have that windshield frame the lower one in there correctly. So let's get this rubber on here and then I'll find some small rope or string if you want to call it to, to pull this on. What I've done now is I've put the rope into the windshield slot. And the idea there is you can Pull the rope and then pull this rubber flange over the metal flange on the windshield. Again, this is just a temporary install to make sure I have my window frame, the lower frame in there correctly. So let's stick it up there and see what we have. Okay, everybody, the windshield is installed temp for the temporary purposes of just lining up to make sure I, when I made some modifications here and put this new lower outer window frame in, everything lined up. I'm sure this is overkill. A lot of people wouldn't do this, but I don't have a jig, a windshield jig. So I went ahead, I like the way it fits. Everything's nice, I got it even. I'm going to try to get it out of there and save the, uh, the rubber. If I can, if not, I'll just buy another one. But uh, I think it was very important for me to put the windshield in to make sure this was in the proper location. All right, well, I pulled the windshield back out, as you can see here. 
I've actually uh, started to uh, I hit this where I repaired this panel down in here. I hit that with uh, a type of paint that converts any surface rust or anything. And I started tack welding this plate back in after I did the uh, rust repairs on this. So I'm gonna tack weld this back in here and then start assembling the inner lower portion of the windshield. Okay, so what I've done is I've basically tack welded this portion of the window, front window frame back in place. And uh, I'm grinding this, I'm just blending in all the welds. So uh, just wanted to give you guys a close up of what it looked like. So let's stay after it. Have this piece tack welded back in got a few little places I want to hit again but for the most part it's back in nicely I'm uh, gonna come over here and finish blending this one in got a few more welds to make and blend all this in over here and then I will we'll put this inside lower system in okay everybody I got these panels welded back in i have to blend the welds i did the same thing over here i'd done this a while back but i still had some welding to do i'll blend all these welds in and then we'll start installing this inner lower and part of these a pillar on the inside they're all fitted up i just need to tack weld them and then start drill a bunch of holes here for spot welding so all right here we go Okay, everybody, I, I got this all blended in, welded, blended in, spot welded. Uh, have the other side completed also. You can see some of this rust convert primer I threw on this one first, but I'm not gonna grind that off, but everything blended in real nice. Now that I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my uh, rust convert paint from Eastwood up in here while I can get to it easy. And then I'll start putting the uh, inner window frames, uh, this here, in. Got one on the other side there, and the inner lower windshield frame. So let's keep working. Sorry I didn't film this, guys, but I got busy and forgot to turn the camera on. But I, there was a little pinhole here. I actually cut it out, put a new patch in, did the same thing here at this seam. Were these two? pieces of metal connect these tend to rust right here but anyway the repair is done looks good what I'm going to do now is um, on a go ahead and spray this Eastwood interior frame coating on the interior of this bird cage you use this system here it's a tube and it's got a special nozzle on the end there that um, We'll spray 360 degrees inside. I'm gonna spray it up in here. I'm gonna go up in here before I weld this piece on and try to coat as much as I can of that interior of that birdcage on the, on the hard top, on the coop top. Okay, folks, I, you can see here, I shot the inside 
the bird cage uh, went up through this hole here with the Eastwood system. I had to, it only reached to about here. So as you can see, I taped everything off. You can see I got good coverage. You can see the black paint on the tape. And what I did was I went ahead and drilled a hole, access hole right here, uh, so I could get the bird cage that way. I'll just plug those. No big deal, they're covered up. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I will actually go up through the hinge pillar also and then down at a different time once I patch the, uh, the gutter uh, areas. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I have the uh, inner lower frame clamped in there in the right spot. And I wanted to show everybody what I did to make sure I had these pieces in the correct place. First of all, I took the dash. Now, if you guys know, but these first two holes in the dash that go to that particular lower frame, the first two, there's less distance between them than the other ones. So you gotta be careful. So because this dash bolts in there, I took and made me a small strip it's center to center on the hole. Now I know that the holes on the lower that are stamped in are correct, but when you have two pieces that are coming together, like on each end, which as you can see, I'm putting new pieces partially up the door frame, you gotta make sure that distance between this hole and this hole. These are two pieces that are coming together here. So you got to make sure everything lines up. So if you look at this, center to center on the hole perfectly. So that's how I know I did that on each side. That's how you know that you have these pieces here uh, in the right position. So this piece here is in the right position and so is the other side. So I'm going to mark those. I'm going to take everything back off and then I'll drill my holes for the spot welding. Those are my spot welds, at least on this piece. The rest of the spot welds will come through to this piece, but I want to get these from underneath. Yeah. So let's get drilling on the outside frame. If you guys are wondering why I put these tiles on here, it's because this is nice and clean steel. You get your sweaty arms on there and they start to rust again. So just trying to keep it from doing that. Don't want to clean them up for the third time. So let's get to drilling these holes on this portion where all these spot logs are going to be.
Okay, I'm all, all my spot weld holes are drilled, as you can see. I'll get everything clamped in position. All my measurements are correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack weld things. Place, make a few more measurements, and then trust my instincts. So here we go. Well, everybody, I didn't get as far as I wanted today because I got everything ready to tack weld the rest of the window frame in, and guess what happened? This is what happened. My old l -Tech welder, 250 amp MIG welder, the feed motor quit working. Not sure why, that's this little motor right down here. But it won't kick on. I thought it might be just a fuse, but I checked it, it's not the fuse. So, I did find the old wiring diagram, so I'm gonna give this a day or so to see if I can repair this. If I can't, I guess I'm gonna have to get a new welder. That's, that's a tough problem, right? Nah. Anyway, I've been thinking about getting a, another welder, one that can TIG and MIG and stick. And Eastwood has a nice one. I'm considering it uh, if I can't get this one running. But anyway, things happen. Sorry I couldn't get, get you guys a final window, window frame completion, but uh, that's the way life goes sometimes. So thank you for watching Glaze's Geezer Garage. Um, we're working away. We're not working as fast as uh, I'd like to, but hey, we're getting there. As you can see there behind me, that window frame is ready to weld in. I was hoping I could complete it today, but with a broken welder, I cannot. So, thanks for watching. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. That really helps us out. So, I appreciate it. Again, like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate you guys.